Greetings, I am Robert Cooper and welcome to my new show, The Gallery. For 15 years I've been a photographer and a journalist, so I decided to start a new series to discuss photography as an art form. You can expect interviews with photographers whose work I know and respect, as well as visits to art galleries that have photo exhibits going on. So if this is something to your liking, please hit the subscribe button and stay tuned. People who know me know that there's one thing that I love more than photography, and that is music. I mean, I listen to a variety of forms of music, from reggae and dance hall, to hip hop, to house music, jazz music, I love the blues, I love African music, and every once in a while, I'll even listen to punk rock music. It's one of the reasons why I became a journalist and why I enjoy taking photographs at concerts as well as doing photo shoots with up and coming music artists who are in need of promotional photos. Now for this first episode of the gallery, I went down to the International Center for Photography in Lower Manhattan to attend the press preview of Contact High, A Visual History of Hip Hop. The show shares the same title as the book, A Contact High Visual History of Hip Hop, which was written and curated by Vicki Toback. Now, she's been involved with hip hop since the early 90s, when she started out working at a record label, and then she became a hip hop journalist. Now, what she did was, she got in touch with photographers who have been documenting hip hop from its early days all the way up till today, and in this book, and also in the art gallery, are some of the most iconic photographs in hip-hop history. So instead of listening to me talk about the exhibit, just sit back, watch the rest of the video, and you will hear from Vicki Toback herself, as well as some of the other photographers who are featured in the book and also in this gallery. Um, we, you know, the book came out, uh, we then uh, got approached by the Annenberg Space for Photography to open it as an exhibition in Los Angeles. Bringing this home to New York is just really, really special. So um, uh, we have over 40 photographers in the show. We have a lot of the original contact sheets. Um, we have a few objects. We have the Dapper Dan Rakim jacket, which also is making its homecoming to New York for the first time in years. Um, Biggie's crown, um, and all you know, all the the 40 plus photographers that have been documenting this from the late 70s through to today. Um, we have the West Coast represented with Jorge Pinche here. Um, Baron Claiborne, who shot this amazing Biggie photo, is here. Yeah, right. So um, Danny Hastings is right behind me, and um, you know a bunch of other photographers. So oh, Jeanette Beckman <laughs> is over here. Yes, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, Jeanette was actually the first person that I interviewed for for this project. So. Um, so yeah, so thank you everyone, enjoy. I'm here if anyone has questions, the photographers are here. Fab, if you want to just say a few I just words. want to say it was yeah. great. Vicki started this initially, it was a column, if you will, that would appear in the, was it, Mass, the Mass Appeal. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was a great idea to connect with these photographers 
the images we've all seen, but to get them to go into their archives, pull out stuff that they hadn't probably even looked at or thought about in decades, and then to give them a chance to have a voice was so special for me. Um, to hear the creators and to get a snapshot of the creative process. And also realizing that this was the first comprehensive history of hip hop photography show ever. It was just, it made it seem even so much more important. The Gordon Parks photo around the corner that you can see from the street is the centerpiece of the show and just a great way to celebrate photographers, the history of the culture, and my first time being a creative director. I'm still not sure <laughs> what my job is, but I'm here and it's dope and I'm happy that literally it is now home where it all began. Most dominant music cultural force on the planet, in case you didn't know, you didn't know. now you know. Cheers. <laughs> I like Mickey had a certain kind of presence that other people don't really have. And at the time I was doing a lot of icon, like saints and things like that as part of my own work. And you know, I was doing a lot of fashion. So, you know, I always like to dress people up and make people look, have a lot of dignity. And uh, I'm, it, unfortunately he died three days after the photo was taken. But the thing is, I love the fact that it's become the photo that people know him as simply because it's such a, a great symbol of what he really was. To me, he was, kind, he was kind of a noble person. And I think also people forget that he died, he was only 24 years yeah. old. So he didn't really even get to live, you know, a long life like he should have. But fortunately, he's still alive in the minds of, you know, his fans and a lot of other people. So, you know, I'm proud to have had a little bit to do with that. All these photographers at one point did not know how would that, how that biggie picture was going to be like. He didn't know yeah. until until he saw it for the first time in the contact shit. Yeah. And that's what this book is showing you, right? The contact shit, the pictures that didn't make it, the pictures that, you know, the first time that you saw this page, you were like, oh my god. <laughs> and it's limited, yeah. right? Yeah. It was just 12 shots if you had 120 film or 36 shots if you had 35 millimeters. That was yeah. it, right? So you, you had to be precise, mm -hmm. you had to be precise, you had to be like, you had to know your, your technical and there was no room for like, yeah, let's try this, let's try that, which is more like, we're going to try this, we're going to do this, <laughs> right? we're going to do this, we're just going to do it, right? And uh, this is where we're at right now, man, this is where we're at, so I'm glad you love the all of these images because they're very special. I actually started out working at Payday Records um, up the block from here actually mm -hmm. um, and so we had a lot of you know we had Gangstar, we had early Jay-Z, we had most Def and his first group and so I met a lot of the photographers that were that are in the show back then so I already knew um, sort of like you know this person that like Jamil GS, Lisa Leon, Jamel Shabazz like I knew the photographers that were doing the work early on, um, and I was on a lot of those shoots. Um, and then, of course, you know, everyone knows the like iconic photos: Biggie in the Crown, um, you know, Illmatic. Like, so just one by one, I started um, reaching out to the photographers, um, saying like, I want to see your archive. I want to talk to you about what was happening um, for yourself, for the artists, what was happening for hip hop at the time. Um, interviewed, you know, over 40 photographers, visited all of their archives, um, yeah, and just slowly, you know, built it up. And, you know, the book is chronological, starting in 79 with um, Joe Conzo's photo of Cool Herc. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was just, you know, real meticulous like that, like who were the photographers documenting and which images are the images that really define the through line of hip hop narrative. I'm just real happy for hip hop, as like corny as that sounds, like I'm just, you know, happy for the photographers and I'm happy that, you know, a culture that like so many people loved and believed in without any like cosigns or any of this kind of, you know, museum treatment mm -hmm. that they are getting it anyways. So it's it's bittersweet, you know, because when you see something that started out as a small 
community, you know, and now being in museums, um, I'm happy, you know, I'm happy for it. Now everything's very controlled for the most part. The artists own the imagery, they control what goes out. So you just see less candidates. Um, and, you know, there's still photographers out there shooting, but a lot of times now you need to get that access. Like, Jay-Z and Beyonce now have their own photographer who has access. Ray B.B., and she's in fact, she's part of the show. J. Cole has a photographer, Anthony Supreme, who is in the show. Um, so it's just much more professionalized now in all the good and bad ways, I guess. A lot of contact high, contact sheets, like nobody really shoots analog that often, so you don't have contact sheets anymore. You have, we live in an age of digital. You see a lot of, um, you know, like Instagram photography, things that seem very perfect. You don't see artists sort of in their process or working it out. Um, and also, the artists, because hip hop has become so big, the artists now understand the power of their imagery. Whereas before, photographers could get more access, you see a lot of more candid shoots, you see people in the studio, you see people like not at their best. I give thanks to each and every last one of you who watched this very first episode of the gallery. I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and you will be informed as to when future episodes have been uploaded. And if you're on Instagram, make sure you follow me at rcooperphotography. That's all for now. Bless and love.